mm -hmm. because it's revenue neutral. Well, okay. Yeah. Are there other questions? Oh, Anna. Oh, it's a comment, so I can, I can wait. Unless now is the time for comments. Mm, it is. Oh, you said questions. All right. Oh. So that's not on you. I just wanted to not go out of turn. Yeah. Um, when something, it's such an interesting document, and you know, I could, I could read it every day. But I think there's, <laughs> there's a lot of. Th this is a broad overview, and at the same time, there are some things that get a lot of specificity. Um, and so one of the things that, you know, I know that we've heard a lot about uh, from our community about folks feeling a little bit like we've lost some of the specificity around climate action and racial justice in our goals and uh, a bit in our budget too. And there are a couple areas that I feel I personally would like to see more specificity um, around climate specifically. So that's just because that's kind of where my brain has been for a while. Um, and because sitting in on ECAC, it's clear that funding needs to be, needs to come through if we're going to meet these goals. So while the general idea of keeping a climate lens and, you know, all things in service of climate action is wonderful. Right. right. That's a really, thanks Dorothy. That's a really broad, broad phrase. So there are, there are areas that I'd like to see some specificity, um, including the, um, uh, and I'm happy to send you my marked up version if that's helpful. And I apologize. I am in the same boat as Alicia. I, I uh, have Sundays to do my, my council things. So I don't often get things back to folks early, but um, um, on page seven at the bottom, talking about roads and sidewalks are a clear need across town and a high priority for residents. This should be considered a fifth major capital project. We are also aware of future needs and recommendations by various boards and committees. We look to you to present a capital improvement plan that provides a strategy to meet these high priority needs. And then I would say with, this is another spot where I would say with consideration for our climate action goals specifically, including bicycle and pedestrian access. Um, so, you know, there, there are certain places that I feel would benefit from more specificity uh, specifically, I was looking at this from that climate lens, um, and I'm happy to send those along if that's beneficial. It would be yes. Happy to do it, Andy. Could I just also comment when you send them on the ex the extent? I mean, you can write short, but is this to be achieved in the next year, you know, so some right. of that was yeah. multiple year phrasing right. was when we then come, what we think we can do, it's a budget mm -hmm. guideline. Yeah, yeah, yeah can, absolutely. So, so just if you could. Sure. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, if, if it's possible to send along a Word document, that's a lot easier for me to do track changes if that's, if that's possible. I think I only have the PDF. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Mandy Jo. Thanks. Um, four comments slash questions or requests. Um, the first one's on page four with the paragraph beginning in 2021, we established a reparation stabilization fund. The last sentence of that is says when transfers are made, uh, we hope that we will be able to transfer an amount to the reparation stabilization fund closer to the 205 ceiling so that we continue to make progress to achieve. The sentence before that said, according to projections, the projected is about 150. Um, and so I'm curious whether that second, that last sentence is proposing a change in policy that's a change from the council vote from last year, last spring, that said we would change, we would trans, we would try to transfer an amount equal to the revenue, cannabis tax revenue, and this sentence seems to indicate that we're going above and beyond that equal. So, are we change? Is this financial guideline proposing a change in policy? Um, my second comment is on page seven, the last paragraph before section five, um, that's talking about changes in revenue or deficits. Um, I'd like to see the finance committee added to who gets kept informed if there are changes to revenues or deficits. Right now it talks about just BCG to be convened, but I think our finance committee should be kept informed too yeah, when yeah. things like that yeah, happen. Yeah. Um, 
On page eight, the first paragraph, the one that's continued, the last sentence refers to the need to review the surplus real property disposition policy. And so I think if we're going to put that into this guidance, we should also include a motion that goes along with this to refer that policy to the finance committee for review, instead of just talking about it in here of, oh, it needs reviewed. Well, let's actually refer it for review. And on page 10, the first full paragraph that talks about advocacy at the state level, um, I think it's missing from this, but we always seem to get shortchanged, and I'm going to use that word, when the state allocates its own pilot money for state-owned land in that Hadley gets more money than us for state-owned land from the state. This is different than the local um, negotiations. This is the state one. And so I think we should add to that, if it's not in there, state-level advocacy to redo that formula for those pilot um, allocations. Yeah. Uh, Mandy Jo, could you just go back to the one before that? The page eight, um, yeah. surplus real property disposition policy. Uh, top, top of the page, the last sentence in the continued paragraph. Um, you know, yep, seems I to say it. that it needs reviewed. And so I'm suggesting we should include a motion in our motion sheet when this comes up for, up for vote to refer that prop policy to the finance committee for review. Okay. I think that's a question that we need. It's a council process question. Uh, GOL has taken on reviewing policies in the, uh, in we would be handling this one differently. Um, as Paul has pointed out, um, some of the corrections in that policy is that it refers to town meeting and select board. Um, so a lot of the revisions are around those issues and not about the underlying policy question. Um, the question of dis the final decision on what it is that we would uh, dispose of if a proposal is made to sell a piece of property because it's no longer needed. Ultimately, it does require action of the council. So we're not going to avoid the finance committee or the council. And so some of this cleanup question is really who's the most appropriate committee for that kind of a, of, of a problem that we all felt that, that it was our reaction that we basically have a good policy, but it's severely outdated as written because of it was written in the days of the select board. Yeah, so maybe it's TSO, but if we're not going to take action to actually refer it for review, then I would recommend we delete that sentence. Because um, why put it in there if I mean, it says the town council needs to review. If if it's if the town council is not going to then take the action to do so, you either change it to the town manager needs to review or you delete the sentence is what I'm saying. Uh, could we just say refer to an appropriate committee and then let the president decide? Still needs to be a motion to refer though. But yeah, I'm I'm asking that the motion be put on the motion sheet when we do this. Mm -hmm. and whatever their appropriate committee is. And I would like an answer to my question about page four and the reparations fund and whether the finance committee is proposing a change in policy with respect to that. Yeah, I'm gonna ask uh, finance committee member Miller if she would like to respond or if she would like me to respond. Uh, we've had a conversation about this and I think um, this was sort of Andy's thinking that went into the guidelines based on these projections. Um, I think that you're raising a great point in that we should have a discussion if that's going to be a trend that cannabis tax revenue is going to be at 150 or go, you know, below where we had anticipated. I don't know if it for this particular guideline needs to be, maybe there's some wording that indicates that we're aware of the trend and we're keeping an eye on it. And then um, if it occurs again, when we come around to it again, I think as a council, we will want to discuss whether modeling it off of that still is the right uh, approach. Is that Yeah, we'll take it back to the finance committee as one of the issues to discuss and we'd talk tomorrow 
Um, I think that the reason that it's in there for the uh, guidelines for the year in question is that during that year, that a transfer um, proposal would need to be made at the appropriate time according to the resolution. And uh, we need to decide whether we should be providing guidance to the uh, manager about how to approach that under the circumstances of this year. But I will uh, make sure that's on the agenda for tomorrow of topics to discuss. Okay, Shalini. Um, uh, I, I was wondering if you can give uh, the reasoning for putting that statement that Jennifer brought up uh, on page six, the town will likely need to forego taking on some new efforts on this revenue neutral, you know, related to again, climate action, housing and social justice, because it's under, I mean, one, we want to bring that lens of social justice and climate action to all our decisions. And it's understood that, you know, I mean, we're going to come up with specific goals that we want within each of those. And it's understood that, you know, we're only going to do certain things. So why are we singling out these three things as opposed to, I mean, why do, why is that statement even needed? I don't understand. But the time I think that the I think the finance I mean it can come out, but in the end the finance committee was trying to make a point to the community as well as to the town manager that hard decisions are required, and it was uh, also recognized as I said a moment ago that these are areas of major investment need and they are gonna call for the hardest decisions to have to be made. Uh, and we didn't feel that it was our role to duck that hard question, but we wanted to pass it on to the council as a whole. So I'm glad that it's come up, um, but, the, but I, um, it, it is still, a hard issue that you get that we need to be thinking about is we're setting limits. And I think that the other thing that's very implicit in this, and I will point it out um, very clearly, is that we did also propose in the guidelines that we value all of the services that we currently provide in the staff, and that that in and of itself essentially takes up what increase we foresee in the year ahead. And uh, I think it's uh, important to consider both of these uh, questions as to whether you feel that they're appropriate in the end. You know, we did the drafting to get issues on the table, but it's the council that the guidelines belong to, not committee. Do you want to take comments on just this one topic, Lynn, um, or sure. jump around? Because I, I just want to follow up. Okay, Kathy, go ahead. Okay. Um, I actually agree that calling them out, uh, you could take them out of the sentence, Andy, and it still works if we took major investments because we just talked about community fields as a multi-year process. Um, and I could add a couple other things too. So I think the sentence works without calling out a specific set. Be and because the goals are, even the climate action goals that have been sent to us weren't do everything in 2024. So. When we talk about it tomorrow, I could see that the sentence will read fine without right. listing three. Yeah. Any other comments on this particular one? I have. Michelle, yeah. Jennifer, go ahead. Yeah, no, just to concur, I think that it, by leaving it in the sentence, it sounds like we don't prioritize them as, as much as other budget areas. Um, but I also do want to ask, so I had a list that of items that you know, I wanted to 
include or suggest be included in um, town manager goals. But should I also send that to the finance committee? No, those are, so I was to make sure those are separate. Okay. That goes to the committee. If, You're on, Jennifer. If they have you. financial implications, yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I understand. Yeah. Jennifer, if they have financial implications, yes. Okay. Michelle. So back to page six, um, I, I'm seeing it a little bit differently than I think other counselors. Um, climate action, housing, and social justice are commitments that we've made. They're already in the town manager goals, um, and they do require a multi-year and multi-revenue strategy. However, I think that's different from the town likely needing to forgo taking on new efforts. So I'm not understanding why those are in the same paragraph. Um, and when we're talking about fields, uh, that's something new, that is a new effort, um, and it needs to be explored further about how we might proceed to take it on. But with respect to housing, social justice, and climate action, these are goals that we've already committed to, that we've already committed resources to, and um, I think they should be separated from any commentary about needing to forgo taking new efforts on because the way that I read that is, and maybe this is how it was meant, is that new efforts within those buckets of climate action, housing, and social justice, if that's not what was meant, if we're truly talking about brand new initiatives, then I think those should be separated as to not confuse that. Okay. Um, Shalini? Um, yes. And um, I understand that we don't want to focus just on the paraeducator salaries, but could we, is that something that we could put in here or would it be in the town manager goals? regarding looking at um, the salary levels, especially for entry level and um, yes, yeah, so, and, and across the board maybe. So not just bar educators, but all town staff. There, there is a reference in here to a salary review. Um, or maybe that's in the town manager. The, there, there's a reference the, in the town, town manager, manager goals, goals for that. Exactly. It's also yes. in here. There's, it's also okay. referenced here. Um, Shalini? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't read the whole thing very carefully. So what I read was um, that we are not doing that, but are we doing a study or something to look at? Is that mentioned here? Where is it? On? There was, um, sorry, there you were so ready. Um, <laughs> no, it was good. There was, uh, I believe, um, I'm going to look to Kathy. There was in the capital budget last year, we had a whole big debate about, yeah, okay, I'm going to go forth then. Uh, and uh, in JCPC last year, we approved in the capital budget funding for a salary study. Um, your The specificity about paraeducators would be different. Um, that's, it's not specific. It should, I believe that school staff would be covered within town a town salary study? No, nope, they're not because that's union negotiation and done by the schools. So that would be why I don't think it's appropriate for us to reference paraeducators specifically, right. but town staff generally, not including school staff would be covered by the salaries. Um, it's called something different than salary study, uh, but wage study, there we go. Um, that was approved in the last uh, capital budget. Sean, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say that there was a wage study approved, but it, it wouldn't cover the schools. And and I don't know if anybody's asked, the schools may have already done their own wage study of some sort. It, it really falls to the school committee and the school staff. Mm -hmm. Right. Shalini, anything else? Are there other comments? Uh, finance committee meets at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So if you have comments, uh, Andy could send a Word document to people, um, maybe right now while we're sitting here, and um, then 
you can have any comments to us by then. We're also meeting again next week as well. But this will not come back to the council again until the 19th. Pam Rooney? Yeah, could, uh, could that Word document just be put in the packet? Yeah, I, or we'll just email it, it to- every Or send it to everyone. Yeah, okay. that's what we generally do. Athena yeah. might be able to do that for us because she has the Word document. Good idea. All right, any other comments on this? All right, seeing none. Then we're going to move on to the final draft of the town manager evaluation. And uh, this was on my list. And I, first of all, discovered way back in early November, a uh, skewed set of ratings. And so I had to correct that. That was in the packet um, back in November. I also therefore had to do a recalculation and those changes were in, but they were in this packet as well. And then I um, did offer all counselors the opportunity to send me uh, suggested observations, changes, recommendations, et cetera. And I took all of that and I recrafted the memo. So what you have before you is um, my proposed final uh, draft of the town manager evaluation and Kathy. I'm, I Maybe I'll put in a motion to adopt the 2023 town manager performance evaluation as presented. Second. Kathy. I gonna, I, well, I would second it too. And I, I just want to make a really quick comment that I thought you did a terrific job. Um, yeah. I, I know I sent in sort of uh, some were just line edits and some were some substantive it and did a few others, but I think it reads better and it captures. I went back and read all 13 of our comments and it copped to me, it captured the big things that were flagged. Um, and since all of our individual comments are also there, uh, thank you. Thank you for that effort, Lynn. You're welcome. It, it It's one of those bizarre things where nobody can give me input on it until it's a public document. <laughs> so, um, and I totally uh, welcome uh, good thorough reads of it. Anna? I echo what Kathy was saying. I, I, I mean, I think I handed you 28 pages from myself. So I, I know that uh, <laughs> um, this was a beast. And I think something that I, uh, I appreciate the summary that you did. And I think something that might be beneficial for us in the future is as we consider what questions we're asking, not every area had, um, not every area in the summary included things that we had noted as room for improvement or room for growth. Um, and I, I think it might be beneficial for us to really think through this again, not as they're not critiques and they're not personal, they're things that we believe are, are areas for, um, for change. And that really also sets us up going into the goal setting process. So I think as we think about the format that this takes, um, open-ended questions are lovely and a little bit of guidance in terms of what did you, how did you see the, the town manager meet these? And then how did you, what remains left or what remains as an area of, of um, growth might be beneficial and also then lead to more consistency in the evaluation itself. So general comment, not about this uh, summary. And one of the debates has always been, um, are the areas for growth what really gets reflected then in the goals for the coming year? And um, I've tried to not incorporate too much foreshadowing of that, but a little might help. Yeah. I mean, if it's a performance evaluation, it really can't only include just the rosy yeah. things, even though there are many, many rosy things about Paul. Yeah. Okay, good. And yes, you did hand me 18 pages and it was Sorry. broken down into everybody saw it. Nobody, no worry about it. I'm You're welcome, everyone, for my 18 pages. <laughs> That's fine. Dorothy. Um, I just want to applaud the hard work of all the counselors, particularly as shown tonight, the hard work and the intelligence. And I also want to applaud the indefatigable uh, town council president, Lynn Griesmer. Thank you. Thank you. So are there any other questions or comments? Changes? I just like, let's move on. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I don't do that well. Thank you very much, Dorothy. I appreciate that. And Kathy and Anna and all of you. Um, okay, uh, we're up to, I think, Kathy Shane. To do what? This is the vote. Oh. <laughs> to adopt it. Who was? And then, and then I get to send it to Paul and say, thanks for your great work, you know? Yes, it, the, okay. the vote is that we approve this memo. It's to yes. adopt the 2023 yes. Town Manager yes. Performance Evaluation as presented. Yes. Okay, Andy Steinberg. Aye. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Leisha Walker. Yes. Uh, Shalini Balmilm. Yes. Uh, Pat D'Angelo. Aye. Anna Dublin Gothier. Aye. Lynn Griesmers. Aye. Mandy Johanneke. Aye. Anika Lopes. Aye. A Michelle Miller. Aye. Pam Rooney. I'm Aye. sorry. Dorothy Pam. Got Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy Pam. Yeah. And Pam Rooney. Aye. It's unanimous. All right. Um, we are. Good. That's okay. No. Well, okay. committee reports. CRC, Mandy Jo? None. <laughs> okay. Elementary school building, Kathy? Just quickly, we're meeting this Friday, and this will be when we are looking over the specs that we're sending to the cost estimators to do the new estimates. So it won't be a fun meeting to watch. The only other thing I wanted to report is that I did do a presentation for Jennifer and Dorothy's district, and we have some terrific. So I am, I would love to do them at all the district meetings, and I would also like to do them soon, but then again, once we've had some community forums, so when we get further along, right. but it was, um, it works well because the designers have given us motion pictures that bring the school to life. Right. What do you have to on Sunday? I think it, I, I think it would be good if we make a commitment as a council that we have a set of district meetings in a time period, and with some standard things of the school being one of them, and so maybe in, you know, February March would be the time period that we want to do that. We want to really garner the excitement about the school. The other suggestion, and I think we could figure out. You know, the, the the moving pictures allow me just to chat as I'm showing something, but mm -hmm. I could do a script so people could take it out to the community. You know, it wouldn't be dependent on, on any person. Right. So we could do it in the district meetings, but then we could take it to a larger par apartment complex, you know, just to, to a, a broader group. I, I also want to mention that you've been to the District 2 meeting too, right, Pat? Huh? <laughs> She's been to the District 2 meeting with the presentation. Um, okay, uh, Andy, Finance Committee. It's a meeting tomorrow three, at three o'clock. Um, the original purpose was to go over the comments tonight on the guidelines, but we have a couple of major issues that are also on the agenda. So I'll just mention what they are. Uh, one is uh, the um, sewer regulations the TSO worked through. Um, there was one piece that had to go back to the Finance Committee, and we're meeting with uh, Guilford and um, Amy Rusecki tomorrow to talk about it, and that is um, the financial consequences of the proposal to um, have the Enterprise Fund take responsibility for repairs to sewer um, lines as they go from the property line to the sewer main, which was the same issue that we discussed with water. When we discussed water, um, um, Amy in Guilford came up with um, very specific information about what it is that it would cost um, the, the enterprise fund to do that and how it would affect rates. So that's what the subject of that is. And the other one is that we were referred a real estate transfer fee proposal and um, we need to begin our discussion about that. And uh, the, I've notified the two co-sponsors and uh, 
one of the things that uh, is on my mind, and I, we will discuss it tomorrow with co-sponsors who I think will be able to be present for that portion, is that um, it was really initially, I think step one would be that the council requests special legislation. And uh, so uh, having talked with uh, Mindy on another subject about legislation, this is a time where we would have to make that motion so that they could at least, even if we don't agree on exact language, um, she needs to get a placeholder filed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if there is at least a little bit of time urgency with that. So um, uh, anyway, that's tomorrow's meeting. Okay. We can't wait. <laughs> Hey, listen, they used to be at 8.30 in the morning on Tuesdays. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> Thank I'm sure God they're sure. not then. Um, Michelle, G-O-L. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Jones Library, Anika. Uh, so I will need to refer to Paul, if that is okay, because I was not able to attend the last meeting. Paul. No, not much. There was a meeting, but there were no real actions taken. <laughs> Those are the kind of reports we like. Thank you. Um, the liaise and uh, TSO, Anika. Nothing there. We're postponed until the okay. uh, 15th next week. Any liaison reports? Can I just make a quick announcement? Yeah. I Two seconds. AHRA decided today that they're having their next listening session on January 11th, it will be all virtual from 6.30 to 8.30, and it will also include um, some education, like an educational component before opening up for listening. Great. Um, let's make sure we notice that on agenda so we start letting people know. All right. Uh, I a, sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, it was referenced several times today, the, the goals that ECAC had prioritized. I had sent them to um, the chair, vice chair, and uh, special person of GOL. I don't know what you are. <laughs> and so the person who's been working on the goals, there we go. Um, but I'm happy to share those with the full council. And um, yeah. And would you please send them to the finance committee also? Yeah. Because they may have financial. Absolutely. I did give them a cursory grant glance, but yes. Okay. Uh, we have no uh, minutes to approve. Paul, any highlights from the town manager's report? He's trying to save us time. Town, town council comments. I owe you a two month report. Guess what? I've been busy. Uh, but I also just want to mention to you that um, actually several meetings have been can canceled and postponed. So for example, we didn't meet with Mindy and Joe last this last week, I mean, this last month. We also didn't have the Amherst Media meeting this last month, so it's not like there was exciting stuff to tell you anyway. Uh, on the future agenda items, uh, just note that next week, as I you know, two weeks from now, I, I'm not putting this on the 12th. Don't worry about it. Um, we do have an annual discussion about the role of the town council president and the vice president as a preliminary to the election of the president and vice president on January 9th, 2023. Um, are there any other council comments at this point? Because we are going to go into executive session. No? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Um, it's a future agenda item. I just want to correct that um, Residential rental bylaw will not be ready for January. Um, it'll be February 6th at the earliest, and I suspect it will be the first March meeting in all likelihood. Okay. February 6th or March 6th. Uh, Dorothy. Just want to remind my fellow town counselors to make their specific plans for the MMA conference in January. Um, and to uh, go check the website, look at the workshops, and there's one on PFAS, by the way, um, which is <laughs> of great interest. Um, so um, I hope to see you all there. I, I'm hoping very much that we can stay in person and we can have a great conference. That's it. It would be nice, wouldn't it? We haven't for the last, what, two years, I guess. Uh, Jennifer. 
it just a question i guess following up on what alicia alicia had asked earlier which is if we it doesn't have to be at the next meeting or two but could could get some guidelines on what so we have some like objective kind of definition of what constitutes new information mm -hmm. yeah Okay, um, just a minute. Um, okay, um, so with that, I'm going to move to my motions. Um, so I'm moving to convene an executive session for the following purpose. Um, in accordance to Mass General Law chapter 30A, paragraph 21A2, to conduct a strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, specifically town manager Paul Bachman, and in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, paragraph 21A2, to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel, town manager Paul Bachman. So don't go way too far, Paul, but we'll see you in a moment. Wait. Um, we are getting. Uh, I'll um, I'll second, oh. but are we removing two from this executive session? There were four on the list. Um, we're not going to be dealing with the a purchase six purchase exchange, exchange or value of two parcels of real property. Are we? And, and a seven executive we're, session minutes. Are we going to approve minutes? Okay, in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter Thirty A. S twenty one A seven to approve the executive session minutes of May sixteenth, twenty twenty two. Is there a second? Sorry, one more thing before that happens. Yeah. We will not reconvene in open session. Needs to be added. Thank to that. you. So for all of you that are waiting breathlessly in the audience, we won't be back. Uh, I'm sorry if we're getting a little slapstick. <laughs> it's you know, it's just okay. And so I'll second it now that I've changed. All the right. Role. Uh, now that we've gotten it all straightened out. Uh, Pam, uh, Kathy Shane. Yes. Um, Andy Steinberg. Yep. Uh, Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Shalini Paul Milne. Yes. Patty Angelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Lynn Griesmerson. Aye. Mandy Johanneke. Aye. Anika Lopes. Aye. Michelle Miller. Aye. Dorothy Pam. Yeah, Pam Rooney. Uh -huh. And it's unanimous. Okay. We're going to get a new web, a new connection. So you'll log off of this one and go to the new one. 